And we are live. Uh, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are, where the hev- wherever the hell you are. Happy uh, whatever it is. What's today? Today's uh, March 19th. It's a Saturday here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at uh, 432, uh, 432 Pacific time here on the West Coast of the United States. And uh, well, I guess this is considered the West Coast. And then, of course, we have the looks like we have a bunch of the regulars into the live stream. I figured I got this uh, Chrome base into the studio and figured let's take a look at it. I have a video that's going to drop in the next day or so on it, so you'll get a better look at it. But at least let's get a little bit of a preview on it. Uh, very impressed with it so far, more so than I thought I would be. And hence, we're going to do a live stream on it. I haven't live streamed in a couple of weeks, so I figured this might be a good one to go on. You never know how these things go. Uh, as we live stream, people start to show up. So let's just have a good time tonight and uh, check this out. So it looks like we have a few of the regulars. Uh, I see Raphael finally made it, right? I know you've been wanting to. You've been catching a lot of the replays, but I'm glad to see you're uh, here. Um, we've got William Cohen once again. Okay, and good to see you, my friend. Uh, nice to have you. I think you liked that last video I did on the KYY uh, monitor, that 4K external monitor or portable monitor, which, by the way, I absolutely love. I'm actually using it right now. This is it right here. I'm helping me use it as a second display on the live stream. Uh, if you didn't check it out, go over to my channel. It's live there right now. And I don't think we need the music. And then, of course, Tech for Your Needs. How are you, my friend? Uh, good to see you. I'm glad you can join us. As well as Handquake, of course, one of the regulars, a moderator and member of the channel. And uh, we've got U- Umar Aslam. What's up? And MB from Switzerland. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, looks like we got about 25 of you to start this live stream off here Saturday night. Um, yeah, and it looks like um, you looked on Amazon and the price went up $5 on it. I got to find out what's going on with that because uh, it was $249.99. So that was the sale. And then they did an additional 15, which I think you took advantage of. Uh, if it went up by $5, uh, I'm not really sure. So I should ask KYY what the deal is. Uh, but nice folks to work with. You know, they're out of China. And, um, you know, they sent it over. I said, sure, I'll take a look at it. No guarantee on anything as far as if I'm going to actually do a video. And it turned out, it's a nicer display than I thought it would be. In fact, the metrics on it were outstanding. Uh, if you look at the video, you saw the coverage of the color gamut was really good. The coverage or the color accuracy was excellent, as well as uh, the brightness. I didn't expect it to be 400 nits because I've had some of these external displays in the past and or these uh, portable displays, and they never seem to get bright enough for my my liking. Not this one. This one actually uh, measured as what it was claimed to be, and that's about 400 nits. So the discount is now $45 instead of 50. So uh, yeah, that's a pretty interesting that it went up. Not sure what's going on, if that's Amazon or it's KYY over at Amazon, but we'll see. Now, good to see Duck Vision is here. Uh, nice to see you as well. We haven't seen you in a while, so I'm glad you're able to join us. Uh, we've missed you. And uh, yeah, I still think it's a great deal, even for $5 more. Absolutely, William. That was a real uh, steal, in my opinion. And that's hence the title of the video. Um, I don't like to do clickbaity stuff. This really is uh, a steal at $250, or if you can get it, even at $255, or even less if you got that coupon that they were applying a $15 discount. But what we have today, William and everybody, is we have this in the studio. This is the Chrome base. This is from HP running the Chrome OS. And I don't, I don't normally do too many Chrome OS devices, as you know. Occasionally, I will get one in, and I will definitely look at it. But this one, and you can see here, is a 21.5-inch display. It's a very glossy display. But what I like about it is it's an IPS display. It's a touch display. But I like the fact that you can rotate it 90 degrees, as you see here. So, And it's got a nice little hinge on it, very nice and sturdy. And um, what you get is a vertical experience. And I think where this is going to come into play, if you're going to use this in a family room or in a kitchen or something like that, um, it really does mean to be something that the whole family can use. Uh, I've been using it for the past day. And I got to tell you, uh, I've been very, very impressed with it. 
very nice display again very glossy so just keep that in mind but what i really like about this is the fact that the price is really good now the pricing starts at uh, hold on one second the pricing starts at uh 500 and i think 29 dollars but i don't think you'd want to go with that one because if you go over to hp's website 529 dollars and what it gets you is a pentium processor which is not the fastest as we know this one is running a core i3 processor which can have better processing power uh the one thing to keep in mind anytime you you're anytime you're using a um a Chrome OS, it doesn't take up too much resources. So you can go with an older chipset or whatever. Now this is a 10th gen, so it's not the latest uh, 12th gen or even 11th gen, but 10th gen on this, and I've had no hiccups, no slow ups, I've been pushing it, and it's been seems to be working really well. Yes, it's like a giant tablet. So when you do uh, put it in the vertical mode, you can use it and of course in here you can see the pricing we'll get to that in a moment but yes and it's got a very responsive touch screen as you see here uh, i'm liking it a lot actually and i agree it's a very nice looking screen rafael um now they claim that this display will only get 250 nits now i don't know what they're talking about because i measured over 400 nits believe it or not so this got about 415 nits in my measurements. I don't know where they got this 250 nits. nits uh, I don't know if it's a mistake on their website, but at 450, 415 nits, I should say, more than bright enough to make up for the glossiness. Again, I have a lot of studio lights and so forth. Um, now, one thing to note about this display, it's a 1920 by 1080. So it's a 16 to nine aspect ratio. Um, you will notice some pixels if you go up really close, but not really uh, anything to be a deal breaker. It would have been nice to get a 2K display. That definitely would have been nice, but uh, at, at this price, you're not going to be disappointed. Now, that's $529 for the entry-level model. Now, I have the one with the Core i3, 10th Gen Core i3, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it also has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. This one is about $750, which is not bad either. So for $750, the build quality is excellent. It's got this cylindrical design, a very modern looking design. You can actually see it here uh, from the back, and here you get the ports are in the back. Uh, you get two USB ports, which are USB-A, two USB-C ports, and then your power button here. And then you get a keyboard that comes with it and a mouse we'll get to in a moment. But if you turn it to the side, you get a volume rocker up and down as well. So uh, very, very nice. And then on the top shot here, you can see there's a webcam kill switch that allows you to turn off the webcam and the microphone, uh, which was really nice, by the way. Good to see digital slang in the house. How's it good, my friend? Hope you are doing well. I know you threw out your back. I saw that tweet on uh, Twitter. So hope you're feeling better. I know you couldn't do a live stream tonight. So I'm glad you could join us. Uh, hope you are feeling better. That's for sure. It really sucks when your back is thrown out. I've had that in the past. So good to see you. All right. And then, again, anybody who doesn't know, digital slang's got a great channel. It's really killing it. Head on over to digital slang. Uh, after the live stream, of course, not during my live stream, but he knows that. All right, so um, let's go down to, let me just put myself down here. All right, and I don't know why I did that. Okay, never mind. Um, here it is, as you can see, so 21.5 inches, and the speakers on this thing, by the way, are outstanding. We're going to get a little bit of a sample if we have some time here. It's really good, and I'll show you an example in the upcoming video. It's got a 5-megapixel camera on it. We'll take a look at it. You can do up to uh, 1440p video on it. Uh, actually, you can go up a little bit higher, I think, uh, 1944p or some weird uh, aspect ratio, but... Um, a little bit higher than 1440p, but it's a little bit more squared off. If you want widescreen, then you go with the 1440p. I think it's uh, 2560 by 1440. And it's not bad, actually. Pretty good. Uh, and I don't really see too many of these type of devices on the market that, you know, that have this rotating display, which is, you know, like a giant tablet, as William said. And you have the great sp speakers on this, a very decent webcam, as you'll see in a moment. And really good build quality. Now, you can see the back here. Oh, I don't know why that's still on. Hold on. Oh, I hate when this happens. Every time, you know, with the stupid 
um, thing here. Hold on. So if I'm this one, I want to be there. Okay. There we go. Now, as you can see on the back here, very nice material, uh, very sleek looking, right? What do you people think about it? Let me know. Of course, every time I go live, I always screw up this A10 Mini. This is my camera switcher over here. You can sort of see it over here. Um, you know, I, I, I still, there's so many buttons. It's just too many buttons. I think it's overkill. Anyway, it's a story for another day. It does its job, does what we need it to do. All right, so if I, I could connect it up if you want to see it. Now, this does have a, like a fabric on here. Very, very nice looking device. Um, let's, uh, let's hook it up to the HDMI and we can take a look at it a little bit more in depth here. So let me, um, let me link it up here into the back. And let me go here so you can see, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put it into the, one of the USB-C ports. Uh, and there you go. And it doesn't have an HDMI out. So you'll have to use USB-C adapter, but not a big deal, not a big deal. So if we go here, this is it. And as you can see, we can take a look at it. It's running the Chrome OS. Okay, put myself down there, 529. And again, we can take a look at the price real quick and then we'll take a look at the camera and then we'll get a hopefully a sound sample as well. Um, you can, it's running the Chrome OS. Now, you don't wanna go with the Pentium. Go with the Core i3, the 1011, oh, the 1011, the 10 u okay? Make it easier for myself. It's a, two, a dual core, two cores on it, uh, UHD graphics on it. Now, the, it's got a True Vision 5 megapixel display. Um, you're looking at 1920 by 1080, as I mentioned. Now, I have the one with 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that brings it up to 719. And then I got the 256 is what they sent me. That's 739. And I think that is it. I think it's included. Everything's included. Bluetooth keyboard, 739.99 right now. So it's actually a little bit less than I thought. So it's even a better deal. I put a link in the live stream for you to check it out if you want to see if it's something you're enjoying or something you might want to pick up. You like that keyboard G? You like that slick form factor? Yeah, me too. Thanks, Handquake. Yeah, people, hit the like button. It helps get this spread out over YouTube. We already have 16 likes, but we have 36 people watching. So it uh, would be great if you could help me out. And if you want to give to the channel, donate like a super chat or a super sticker, help support the channel, or even become a member. We got a bunch of our members here tonight uh, helping out, of course. And, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's a cost of a, a Starbucks coffee, which is a big ripoff, in my opinion. Isn't this a much better entertainment anyway? at least in my opinion, but you know, no, no obligation. If you can help out the channel, that would be great. Now, um, so that's the, 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 the pricing. Now, if we go to the camera and if I, um, and I'm using the touch screen here, but anyway, I can use the keyboard here. So if we bring up the camera app, here it is, um, here it is. And then, and I'll tell you about a couple of uh, nit nitpicks that I have with it that are not perfect, but here you can see it. So right now, if we go to the settings, um, if we go to camera resolution here, it's at 1440p. So it's 2560 by 1440. Now I do have a lot of lights here, so bear that in mind. It does affect the, the overall quality of the picture. Um, it's a five megapixel camera, but you can go up to 1940, 1944p, that's 2592 uh, by 1944. So if I click on that, and if I go to video, so say we're going to video here, so it's squared off, right? So it's not as a it's not a wide aspect ratio. But if I go back to, and I don't see a big difference in the resolution, it's more in the aspect ratio. And this is 1440p, okay? So uh, you can see it's wider. So you actually see a little bit more. But uh, not bad if you're going to do a Zoom call, if you're going to do a Skype call, it might be okay for that, right? What do you think? Let me know. Um, and here you can see it uh, with the glossiness of this display to give you an idea. Um, at $740, this is a steal, people, and I'll tell you why. Now, if you're not a fan of Chrome OS, this is not going to be a, your main computing device 
Uh, you're going to buy this to do work on if you're in the kitchen, if you do like a great recipe thing. You know, if you have your recipe there, turn it vertically in the kitchen and then you can just use it uh, in the vertical mode. Now, you can adjust it forward and back up to you see here. And it does, again, like I said, rotate 90 degrees. OK, so very nice, actually. Uh, really deep black so far. It's got some excellent contrast and it does have good color accuracy but again 1080p resolution would have been nice to say 2k uh if you do look closely you will notice some uh pixels but you know what i wouldn't hit them ding them too much on that because it's, it's still a very nice display at the end of the day and i'll show you more of that in the uh, upcoming video on this uh rafael's wondering why hb decided to go with the glossy display i think it has to do with the cost or maybe the fact that it's also a touchscreen as well so um that's probably why they did it but again i don't know you'd have to ask them now i don't know if it supports pen uh william i did try uh the my old surface pen here and it doesn't seem to work with a pen but i maybe try a usi pen if i have some time later and that would be interesting it's 144 hertz uh i don't know about that is it i don't know the refresh rate that's pretty interesting um, let me see if they say it here. Um, it doesn't say, and I don't know if we can go to the settings. I'm not really, does anybody know in Chrome OS where I can see the settings on the display? I'm not the most efficient with Chrome OS. Let me go into the settings here uh, real quick. And if I go to the device, maybe we can get to see display settings here. Here's the mouse. Um, let me see if I put in display. We can go in here. Um, so you got display. Uh, let's go to display here. You got the built-in display. It's 1920 by 1080. It doesn't say if it's higher re refresh rate. And I would be very shocked if it was more than 60 hertz, to be honest with you. So I don't see it anywhere. But if somebody knows, Yasser, if you know something we don't, then let us know. Okay um yeah you can game on it i played uh, some of the android app games of course this is android so you can run android apps um natively on the chrome os which i absolutely love that's been pretty good uh so let me know if somebody knows something on that that would be great got 35 of you watching so far How's everybody been, by the way? Uh, I don't know if I asked anybody, but I'm sure everybody's doing okay, hopefully. World's a little bit crazy, but here we are on a Saturday night. Yeah, I don't know, Yasser. Find out. But I, I think it's 60 hertz, to be honest. All right, so that is the camera. Now, I want to try to play something. Let me go to Epidemic Sound. Let me play some of my, because um, I have a license with Epidemic Sound to play their music. Don't want to get any copyright strikes or claims. So we can play something by a guy named Gregory David, who I have no relation, at least I'm not aware of if I have any uh, relation to him. I'll just point my microphone to it. Let's get a listen. Now, you do have a keyboard here. We'll look at the keyboard in a moment. Uh, comes with a keyboard and a mouse, by the way. We'll talk about that. You can see it here. Um, let me play and let me get some. So right now we'll put on, put the microphone there. Let me know because I don't have headphones on right now, but uh, let me know if you could have heard that pretty well. It's good. It does sound good, Raphael? Okay. I'm glad that worked out. Um, if anybody wants Epidemic Sound, just go over there. I'm not being sponsored by them, but um, they have some great music there, right? Uh, Digital Slang, I agree. Definitely some good music there. All right. So that, that what, what do you get for 740 bucks, right? Not bad, right, Yasser? You're getting some pretty good sound out of the speakers on this. You're getting a very nice 
1080p display that rotates 90 degrees as you see here, right? So you can use it in landscape and you can use it in portrait mode. And you also have a 21.8 inch or 21.5 inch, I should say, display, although they call it 22 inches, they round it up. Um, it doesn't come in a bigger display. I kind of wish there was a little bit larger, would have been great. But I think the only negative I see on this is that it's a little bit high up. And if you can see it here, I would have liked to have been able to bring it down, to rotate it rotated up and down for that. It would have been nice, like you do on some other monitors. Um, this allows you to go back and forth, like over here. And then, of course, 90 degrees. But it doesn't, uh, doesn't let you go up and down. And I think it's a little bit too high for some needs that I have. Like sometimes I'll want it to be a little bit lower. So say if I'm using it, well, using it like this is not a problem. But if I'm using it like this, uh, maybe I would have liked the ability to adjust it is what I'm trying to say. I believe this is a really cool product, Digital Slang, and I'm glad you're, you're liking it as well. Um, and I want to thank HP, by the way, for sending it over. I'm not being sponsored by them. They did not pay me. They sent it over as a review unit um, with no uh, right to any copy, say, or anything like that. They are not getting copy approval. So everything you're hearing is only my opinion. So there you go. And once this is done, I'm going to send this review unit back to HP. So for those that are wondering. To be honest, who uses Chrome OS? So I, this is where I think it comes into play. Uh, Chrome OS has really matured. Now the ability to run Android apps, the ability to run Linux on it, and I'm gonna be running Linux on this uh, in, a, in a video, so stay tuned on that. That really opens up a lot of possibilities with this. It also is a great family like appliance. And when I say that, you could put it in a family room, you could watch a movie, Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, all worked well. You could put it, uh, in a kitchen, like I said, as an appliance in a way, if you want to look at some recipes in the kitchen, this is not a bad deal. And you're not really breaking the bank for such good build quality. Um, even if you're not the biggest fan of Chrome OS, I, I think for sur surfing the web, doing emails, the quick thing here and there, quick note here and there, it's a really nice, intriguing choice. And I think it's a pretty uh, unique choice because it's not a Chromebook. It's not a a chrome box it's a chrome base so it's almost like you know what it's like it's like a it's like a, an alexa device or like a hey google device so hopefully i oh, of course of course i shouldn't have said that because it have it's now it's now listening to me i shouldn't have done that but you know what i'm saying uh the bottom line is it's a very very nice device good to see um la guia de, de perlas del perlman how are you my friend happened upon this live show by chance youtube did not alert me never use chrome os don't feel like ever using it but i find your comments use insightful appreciate that yes schools uh handquake uh definitely are big on the chrome os and the chromebooks because they could take a licking and keep on ticking right they can throw them around kids are going to break them they don't they're not that expensive and they get the job done so that's there you go according to william uh, looks like the height is for using it in vertical mode. In that mode, it would be nice to support a pen. One would have a plenty of room to do artwork and also writing with a pen. I don't know if it does. You know, I attended the press briefing, but I don't remember. Maybe I missed it. Uh, if there was pen support, again, I'll double check, but I'm not really sure if it does have pen support. It does have touch. Obviously, I'm showing you here. You can touch on it, but no pen support. Now, Keyboard G is saying, my parents only email and browse. This is perfect. Uh, no wires, all in one. Yeah, one wire here, by the way. And you can see it here. The only other wires is because I'm connected to the HDMI port so I can show you what's on this, uh, on this uh, all in one. But yeah, so it's, it's good for the elderly. It's good for children. It's good for students or just anybody who wants to have a nice device uh, that looks nice, by the way. I mean, this is, this will, you know, I'm doing a renovation here in my house. This will fit perfectly in my kitchen, to be honest, because we have a white and black theme and this will certainly uh, not stick out. And having it there, if I want to check an email or a quick video or just to have something there that looks this nice, I kind of really dig this design. I think they really hit a home run with this design. You can see the back here. Um, it's got that cylindrical fabric on it. Uh, really, really nice. Good to see Stephen Karani from all the way from Kenya. Good to see you, my friend. Glad you could join us. It's like an iMac 24. Yeah, but... 
uh, in some ways, it's a little bit different, obviously, because you're running Chrome OS, and it doesn't have the, the M1 chip or all that. And I don't think you need it on a device like this. I think this is more like an appliance, in my opinion. Again, put it in a family room, put it in a kitchen, put it in a living room or whatever, in a dorm room. Uh, it looks nice and it has some great sound. So it's a great media device. I really have been impressed with it. It's got a nice full HD display like I showed, uh, really. Now, I, I guess you, yes, you can. Actually, I am attached in a way. So this does have a USB-C that does DisplayPort 1.2. You can see it here. And actually what I'm gonna do, let me disconnect it for now because I'm going to, um, I'll connect my iPhone. I wanna show you a close up on the ports and so forth. So let me put it onto my iPhone and use the iPhone's camera on this. So, and if I'm using uh, this really good app, I think it's called Film Mic, oh, Film Mic Pro or something like that. Um, and if I go here, you can see it here and you can really get a good look at the ports, okay? And I can actually go here. So there you go, there are the ports. Uh, you got the power button over here. You got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two USB-C ports, does display port 1.2. And then below that, are two USB-A ports. Now on the bottom, and I don't wanna tip it over, that's where the plug goes in to the power adapter. It's a 90 watt, pretty compact power adapter. I'll show you in the video. And there you can see it as a place for it to have a nice cable management and uh, really nice. I mean, really, really nice. Now, if we go over here, uh, we have the keyboard here and very nice key travel on it. It's a nice value add, uses a one or two AAA batteries. And then next to that is the mouse and it has a little scroll wheel on it. Uh, actually pretty nice, pretty nice. So uh, pretty nice altogether, nice white finish on it. Uh, very, very impressive, very impressive. Uh, let me know what you think about it. All right. Can, can one use their own keyboard and mouse with this? Absolutely. So these are connected uh, via Bluetooth, right? So any Bluetooth mouse, USB-C mouse, or USB-A mouse, for that matter, of course, um, you can connect it via the Bluetooth. This is exactly how these, but the fact is you don't have to buy additional stuff if you don't wanna spend extra money. But if you have a nice mouse or keyboard that you wanna use, you can do that. You can also connect to an external monitor. So if you want dual displays, you can. You could even connect it, William, to the KYY one that I just did in, the, um, in that last video I did. Yeah, and it's, look, look, Chrome OS, you don't have to be the biggest fan, but I gotta say, uh, I've really enjoyed how much this has come so far in, in the last few years. I think it's really matured as a platform. It really can do a lot more than used to. And again, like I said, the ability to run Android apps, the ability to run Linux really opens up a lot of possibilities. Yes, please hit that like button. Thanks, Raphael. Hit that like button, people. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. I really would appreciate it. Uh, we've coming out of a really terrible January and February uh, view wise, it just wasn't great. March has been much better. Now, I gotta tell you, I got a lot of good stuff coming. Finally, we're gonna start seeing some stuff. I can't say just the next few weeks, you're going to be seeing some really good stuff on the channel that we've been waiting for. I'll leave it at that. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And if you wanna become a member, that certainly helps out the channel going forward. Um, especially after the, <laughs> the January and February we had, uh, uh, that is just, really wasn't great. And I think a lot of things, you know, factor into that. The world events, of course, are affecting it. And, you know, I think the pandemic affects it and uh, supply chains are affected. Everything's affected. And just up, up and down the line to get review units is not as easy as it was a few years ago. That's for sure. But they're coming, actually. So we have some good stuff on the way. So if you're joining us late, we're looking at the HP Chrome base. It's a 21.5 inch IPS display, 1920 by 1080. Uh, it's a touch display uh, running the Chrome OS. $740 as configured, has a starting price of $529. So it's actually been pretty good. 
It's actually been pretty good. All right. So any other questions on this? We can uh, go on. Uh, as far as the performance, it's actually been pretty good. It's not going to blow you away, but for watching movies, Netflix, Amazon, it's actually been really good. Listening to music on this has been great. The speakers, as I showed you, sound fantastic. So if you're interested in something like this, uh, if you want to hit up HP's website, I did leave a link in this stream uh, in the description below. If you want to check it out, I do get a small commission. If you do go through that, a small kickback from HP, uh, but that's their affiliate program. Uh, but again, they're not getting any say on the editorial part of this or uh, the fact they're not giving me this device. I'm actually sending this back once I'm done with the review. And that video will be dropping in the next day, probably tomorrow or uh, Monday at the latest. Okay. All right. Where are we? We're at 35 people watching. So good to see everybody here on a Saturday night. So I also did, so what did I do? I did the KYY uh, external or portable monitor, 4K monitor. It's over on my channel. What did I do before that? So I did my review of the uh, Asus Zephyrus G14 for 2022. Really excellent thin and light gaming laptop. Uh, the two videos did pretty decently considering uh, things weren't so great on the channel. So it's been doing pretty good. Yes, I am. They are gaming, obviously. Now, I have something really good coming from Asus uh, early next week, so stay tuned. You definitely want to be subscribed. I got a new uh, device coming from Asus uh, along the gaming line, so if you're interested in that, you want to make sure you subscribe. Um, I also have something coming from Dell, but I can't talk about it just yet. That's coming on the next couple of weeks. That's going to be pretty exciting. And, uh, and then, of course, I still have uh, my full review of the, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. By the way, loving it with DeX and the secondary monitor. We'll talk about that. KYY monitor that I just reviewed is working really well on DeX. So we'll talk about that. Um, the gaming, what is the refresh rate for the gaming and high-resolution gaming? The refresh rate, it, it, like I think out of the box, 60 hertz. It's not higher than 60 hertz on this. And by the way, speaking of Samsung, getting back to Samsung, I ordered one for review, the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 X360 in Burgundy, and that will be coming April 4th, hopefully before then. But the release date uh, is April 4th, I believe. That's coming. I have one on order. I'm um, getting it from Best Buy, so I'm buying it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I got it from Samsung, ordered it from Samsung, and that will be coming on uh, April 4th. And if you pre-order, I think they're giving you a 32-inch gaming monitor from a Odyssey gaming monitor, which is a great deal. I think it's like a $400 value. If you get it, uh, you're going to really like it. Yeah, the S8 Ultra... Um, I didn't review that when I did the S8 Plus. If I get enough demand, I will go into the Ultra as well. OLED on that. Yep, it's an OLED display on that Samsung. Um, now, they are supposedly making it brighter. They're using 12th Gen Intel Alder Lake processor, P-series processor, Core i7. Uh, the unit that I'm getting is 16 gigabytes of, I believe it's LPDDR5X RAM. And it also has... I uh, believe it has uh, either 256 or 512, I don't remember, of uh, PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage, if I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. But the biggest thing is it's still a 16 to 9, which is a little bit disappointing. And, um, and as far as the, um, the processor, it's the P series processor, which is going to be new, Alder Lake 12th Gen. So I'm looking forward to that. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Now, the heard the gaming monitor is curved. I don't know. Uh, I should check that out once I do get it. That's actually going to arrive before the laptop. So I'll probably be able to get a video out on that if you all are interested in it. Yeah, absolutely, Handquake. OLED on the, there's a Super AMOLED display on the, the laptop that I'm getting. Uh, that monitor, I doubt it's OLED at that price, right? So it's probably an IPS. Uh, and it should be a higher refresh rate, maybe 144, something like that. We'll see. Does it support docking like the HP E27 3D? Are you talking about this device as far as docking? I'm not really sure. Uh, it's its own dock in a sense. I mean, it has ports on the back and it's got its own, you know, everything's encapsulated uh, in all in one unit. So... 
Uh, really good so far. Any gaming monitor. So I have my full review. So if you watched my channel, I did the HP Omen 45L. But with that, I also showed you the gaming monitor, the um, HP Omen 27C, I believe, or the 25C, I can't remember. Uh, I have it right here. It's over there. It's a curved monitor that has the high refresh rate. In fact, that, I believe, is at least 165 hertz, but I'm not sure. I'll double check. It's been a couple of weeks since I used it, but I will have a full review on that, so stay tuned. All right, 27 of you watching. Hope I'm not boring everybody. So, <laughs> But you never know how these live streams go, right, people? So far, we're already almost 40 minutes into this, 37 minutes. Let me see how the live stream is doing. You can ask me anything. We can open it up. Uh, it's looking like it's doing okay. Um, let me go over here. Yeah, it looks like the stream is doing okay. How does it look and how does it sound? I've got this big chrome base in front of me. Uh, hope it's not blocking me too much. Let me move it to the side a little bit. Display is clear. Like the display, it's clear. All right, that's good. That's good. All right. 4 a.m., Yasser. All right, so you're a trooper, man. Good morning or good evening. I, whichever which way you look at it, it's uh, it's pretty good. Enjoying the stream while I cook. You know, that's interesting. While you're cooking, something like this could be a nice for recipes. I was just thinking about that in the kitchen. And I'm just doing my renovations here. So having this is like having a giant tablet on its own base, right? Uh, you can listen to music with it. The, the speakers, like I said, have been fantastic on this. Uh, this is a really nice little device. Well, not little, but it's a nice device. Having something like this, I mean, really is a, a game changer in a lot of ways for some use, like, a, like an appliance in a, in a sense. So I'm really liking that. Um, let, me, let me zoom out a little bit so you can get a full extent of this. Um, you can see it here. And really, really nice. I mean, I got to give credit to HP for this. Um, you can see all that. Now, this is the volume rocker up and down. Now, these are B&O speakers or Bang & Olufsen speakers. There's some branding there. Um, very, very nice. So kudos to HP. I'm glad you sent it out. And for those that are wondering, um, this is the keyboard. And again, it takes two AAA batteries. Um, there you can see it there. And then the mouse is here. So you can see the mouse there. Uh and again, all nice white finish, and it's it's good. You know, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay extra. It does look nice. I agree. Okay, let me put myself down here. All right. So that's that. Any other questions while we have it here? And again, I figured let's go live. I unboxed it. I will um, have a video on that probably tomorrow or the day after. So there you go. Hi, which size does the Chrome base come in? So this is a 22 or what they call the HP Chrome base 22, but it's actually a 21.5 inch display. Glossy, as you can see my light there. Um, it is a 21.5 inch, but there is no other option. And it's a 1080p. Would have been nice to give you a little bit of a nice option to go with either 2K or even a 4K display, pay a little bit extra money, but that's not what you get. These are the options right here. Uh, and you can see it here, uh, but I, I discussed it earlier. Uh, you can get it with a Pentium processor as a starting price, 529. For $739 as configured here, you're getting that Intel Core i3, 10th gen, a little bit better in terms of performance, obviously. But again, Chrome OS is not going to require too much. Uh, I went over the prices earlier, Jeremiah. Starts at 529 for that Pentium processor. Go over the website. The link is in the description below. As configured here with 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 256 gigs of SSD storage, this one is $739.00 and 99 cents over at HP. So if you want it, head on over to the website uh, and pick one up. Um, and I gotta tell you, if they didn't send this to me, I wouldn't have known about this, but had, now that I know about it, and maybe I'm thinking of getting one for my kitchen, because of course I'll have to send this one back. It is a re review unit on loan, but I'm thinking of getting one with my new renovated kitchen. And I think this would look kind of cool there and be useful there. So 
Uh, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And again, those that want to see the pricing and more of the options you get, uh, head on over to that link in the description below. Want that 27 inch with a wall mount. So yeah, 27 inches would have been good and you could mount this, that would be great also. Uh, but it's on its own base here, obviously. So that would be pretty cool. Um, again, the only thing that I would criticize this display, you can see a little bit of the pixels. It's a 1080 1080p display, 1920 by 1080. Uh, and it is a 21.5 inch display. So you will notice it if you go up real close. And again, when you're in portrait mode and it is used as a tablet, so to speak, there you go. And we got our first super chat, wow, from uh, Handquake. Good to see you, my friend. Oh, you gotta go, but I'm glad you were able to stop by, Handquake. Uh, and thank you so much for that super chat. It means a lot, definitely. Thank you so much. And see you next time, my friend. Glad you could stop by. So let's give it up for Handquake for the $5 super chat. Much appreciated. All right, people, anything else? We may not go much longer. Anyway, we're already at almost 45 minutes. I didn't want to make it too long tonight. Uh, and I'm not drinking tonight, if you notice, because I do have to drive somewhere after this is done. So, of course, I uh, didn't want to risk anything and uh, be intoxicated, although I'd like to be. <laughs> anyway, so how's everybody doing? Good? All right. Now, um, as far as what's coming up on the channel, as I mentioned, I do have that Samsung Galaxy Book 2 uh, 360 coming, and that's going to be pretty good for uh, our first look, my first look at least, at a 12th gen, or publicly at least, of the 12th gen Alder Lake processor running the P-series processor, Core i7, and that's going to be pretty interesting. Now, I'm a little bit disappointed in that Samsung didn't do the... Um, uh, 16 to 10 aspect ratio. They stuck with the 16 to 9, which is not the trend anymore. Everybody seems to be going to 16 to 10. But we'll see. We're going to get it in in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned. That is coming. Does it have an Ethernet port? No Ethernet port, as you can see um, here. No Ethernet port, but it does have two USB-C ports, and it does have um, two USB-A ports. Now, let me take a look at, if you want to see the ports real quick. And let me go to this, and there it is. You can actually go like that. So there are the ports, for those wondering what you get on this. Again, like I said, power button below that, 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, and below that are two USB-A Oh, two USB-C and then two USB-A. Good to see the poets here. It is, I believe it is Wi-Fi 6E. I believe it is Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5. I'm not sure if it's 5.1, but I believe it's 5. And it does have Wi-Fi 6E, if I'm not mistaken. I'll double check that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I'm glad you are able to be part of it, Raphael. You've been enjoying the 12, uh, the poets, by the way, th those aren't following him on TikTok or YouTube. The poets has been killing it. Uh, check out his channel, people. He's been really doing a great job. And he's been enjoying the 12th gen line. I think you'll like it. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. I just can't talk about it too much. Um, the one I did do, and I think you did it also, was the HP Omen 45L. And that actually has been pretty good. So um, there you go. So if you haven't followed the poets, you should. Oops. And this weighs about 16 pounds, all right? So this is about 16 pounds or almost just a shade under seven kilograms or something like that. Um, so you can move it around room to room. That's the other thing that gives it uh, a pretty interesting um, take on it. Uh, it says Wi-Fi 6, I don't know if it's E actually, because it says Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX201, so it's not E, I stand corrected. It's Bluetooth 5 combo, and it has gigabit file transfer speeds according to this. So for those that are wondering um, if, you know, and here it is on the, uh, we could show it on here. So there you can see, and then you can sort of see the pixels, but it's hard to do it on a video. Uh, it's Wi-Fi 6, not 6E. Okay, so I don't think you're going to get it on that. And not surprising, not surprising. Okay. 
Yeah, the cryo chamber helps with the cooling on the 12th gen and the Omen 45L. Yeah, that is a that absolutely helps, and that's a beast. That machine. Uh, I was blown away by some of the numbers that it was able to show, uh, able to produce, and the thermal solution is a pretty interesting solution with the cryo chamber. Absolutely, um, definitely gaming on it. Actually, my son has been gaming on it. He's been loving it. Um, and uh, we're going to have some more videos on that. And the Omen monitor that they also sent over, like I mentioned. I believe it's the HP Omen 25C. Or is it 27C? I can't, I can't remember. But that one has a high refresh rate, and it's actually working out pretty good. Good to see Revolt here. What up, folks? How are you, my friend? Um, and then... Oh, we have 35 people watching, so that's good. All right. I didn't expect a lot of people tonight, but it's good that nice folks that did show up, some of the regulars, so I'm glad to see that. Yeah, 27C, that's what I thought. Very nice display, and I'm going to have a separate video on that as well. Okay, so for those that want to see more monitors and stuff on the channel, I've got that coming. Still waiting for the X360 Alder Lake. Yeah, uh, I haven't heard anything from HP on that, so hopefully... We'll get something, and I, I want to see the Envy get updated here. I want to see the uh, to six six thousand series Ryzen's. I want to see the uh, I want to see more of these older lakes coming in. And again, I will be reviewing the Samsung uh, offering in a couple of weeks, so we'll get that into the studio. Yeah, they, you know, a lot of people are waiting for that X three sixty. That's for sure. You know, the other thing. Yeah, Spectre. Yeah, so the Spectre line is their flagship. Obviously, I've recovered it from their inception, of course. Um, yeah, I'm anticipating it getting 12th gen with hopefully a P-series on that, and uh, we'll have some good performance. We're going to be getting in the XPS 13, 90, the XPS 13 Plus, 9320. That's going to be coming in, so stay tuned. You're, and the Poets is mainly waiting for the next generation Threadripper. Yeah, a lot of us are waiting for that. That's going to be uh, really, really impressive stuff, apparently. So, yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting for sure. There's a lot of great stuff on the way, people. We're sort of in this holding pattern. We're almost there. Just be patient. Mac Studio. I, I passed on it. I didn't want to review it. Every time I do a Mac device on the channel, it tanks. So I'm not getting them day one, so it's not even worth it, in my opinion. Unless you really want to see it, I'll do it. Um, the last time I did it, the 16-inch the uh, with the Mac uh, M1 Pro, it didn't do well. I mean, maybe I got seven, 8,000 views. Um, but, and you know, for some reason, I'm not, didn't excite me that much. I don't know why. Hey, Mallory, good to see you. Glad to uh, have all the regulars here back again. This is good. Uh, do give it one more shot, I think. You, well, it's a very expensive shot to take, my friend. <laughs> you have a, a $5,000 lying around. Uh, maybe you want to help out the channel. Yeah, um, I can't justify it as an investment on the channel. Be, simply from the history of the views on Mac products, it's just, I'd like to do it, but it just doesn't make business sense, right? Um, so there you go. Yes, you as well. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you, uh, Mallory. I'm very happy you're here. Um, and then, of course, I'd really want to review the one, the Ultra, the M1 Ultra, but I'm not about to spend four, five thousand, six thousand dollars $6,000, whatever it is, um, at that point to lose that kind of money. So, because I don't need it. I'm perfectly happy with my 2019 MacBook Pro 16 that you see here, over here. Um, no reason for me to spend that money. Uh, the return on investment would be terrible for me on that. And I'm not doing that high-end video where I would need that kind of. It's like overkill. Yeah, this, the, the studio is very expensive. Yeah, uh, it's beyond expensive in my opinion. But, you know, the Mac enthusiasts will definitely buy them. And, uh, yeah. And that's the other thing. I, You know where I stand on this, right? The Poets Agrees. You can't upgrade it. Now, I, I saw that iFixit did a teardown of it. But it didn't look easy. <laughs> didn't look like it was going to be put back together. At least I don't think it is. Um, so I don't think there's an easy way to upgrade it, if at all. So that is a big, big negative, in my opinion. And I don't need that kind of power for what I do to justify that price. And like, like William says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I agree. 
yeah, and I'm a creator, but I still don't think it's even, you know, worth that price tag. Now, there's a lot of problems uh, I'm heard I'm hearing on the on the the studio monitor that they also released that the camera is not great, that it needs a software update maybe. Uh he put it back together Max Tech. Yeah, so that's good that they did it. So they were able to are they able to upgrade it? That was good. I was terribly anxious watching him take that thing apart. Yeah, not for the faint of hearts. It didn't look like something I would eat, and I love to tinker, you know that. I'm opening up this, th I'm always opening these things up. Uh, that's one I didn't even, I would not even want to attempt. But again, he showed it, put it back together, working fine. Um, all right, so then there you go. Spend the $6,000 or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, overkill. I think you'll be perfectly fine with the MacBooks, the MacBook Airs, or the MacBook Pros. Or those are expensive also. Um but again, if I were go to go out and spend that kind of money uh, to get five, six, seven thousand views, it's just not worth it, to be honest with you. You know, so not not really worth it for my channel. Other channels like Max Tech and all these others that you know that are focused on Mac stuff, yeah. There you go. According to Depoet, you can get a Threadripper 3970X. With a 3090 or 128 gigabytes of RAM, four terabytes of storage for less than a comparable Mac Studio and have more use case options. And that is very well put, that's for sure. And then they're going to release the M2 from what I'm hearing also. So yeah, in six months. So there you go. It was a good video. Uh, lots of benchmarks, so much way over my head. Yeah, they love to do the benchmarks over there. They do a great job over at Max Tech. So yeah. Right. And I think at the end of the day, it's like overkill, right? It's impressive. I mean, they're doing unbelievable stuff with that M1 chip. But in the end of the day, to me, it might just be overkill for most people, right? Unless you're a, a creative that does this high-end work with 8K video and does all kinds of graphics and stuff, uh, motion graphics, uh, stuff like that, then maybe then you can justify it. But you know, I'm perfectly fine with what I have, and I don't need to invest that kind of money with such a little return. If I'm going to do a video on it, I'd like to see a return on it in terms of that investment. It is overkill for most people indeed, yeah. But, uh, you know, people are running out buying them, a lot of these YouTubers. I'm sure they're returning them <laughs> within the 30-day return period uh, just to get the views, I guess. And I... And if that works, it works. I don't like to do that. I don't think the Ultra is proving to be too necessary over the Max. Yeah, if, I, if anything, I would get the Max if I'm going to do it. But I, I just don't have the demand on my channel. Why uh, Why still Mac OS trash on gaming even with M1 chips? So if you're a gamer, and I've said this in the past, these, these Macs are not for you. Uh, gaming laptops, gaming desktops will be there on the Windows side. Not on the Mac side. You just—it's not a gaming platform. They are, drivers are not optimized. They did. The developers are not developing for them like they are on the Windows side. So if you're a real gamer, uh, obviously you know where you need to go. That's the Windows. Um, you can game on a Mac. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but if you're serious about gaming, then you obviously want to stick with the Windows. Yeah, they're gonna—they're <laughs> gonna hit that uh, return button soon. <laughs> 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 that's right the poets um yeah you know and i'm not about that uh, i don't do that you listen if i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna buy it to use it i'm not buying it to return it to get a few few views here and there um now i'll return something if it doesn't work or if it's not what's advertised or it doesn't fit my needs and i invested in it and i'm within the return period yeah by all means i'll return it but i'm not gonna buy something just to return it just to get a few thousand views or whatever it is, uh, that's ridiculous. And I'm sure a lot of them will be returning them to Best Buy or whatever. So according to Mallory, she's telling Revolt, I was at The Verge today looking at the, and the content producers, music, pro, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, editing all said that the Ultra wasn't necessary. The Max did just fine. Yeah, that's definitely, um, definitely overkill if you're going with the Ultra. Where they fuse the two chips together basically doubling the performance, I guess, theoretically. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty interesting um, scenario for the Macs. Uh, again, all these guys are going to go out, or gals, they're going to go out and buy them and then return them. And there you go. 
Oh no, Robert's Robert's back again after last week's big time uh, super chat. Wow, unbelievable! Give it up for Robert. Saving <laughs> once again, <laughs> saving the channel on the live stream. Uh, I really appreciate it. Robert. That is just ridiculous, but much appreciated, obviously. But thank you so much. Uh, but unnecessary, as I mentioned in the past. But I do appreciate it. Yeah, he's a beast, that guy, right? Revolt. Wow. <laughs> Robert always produces the wonderful support. Absolutely. You know it, uh, Mallory. And by the way, Mallory, a few weeks ago, I got a, uh, on the chat, Granny E. Remember Granny E? She, uh, and I think her name is RR or whatever on the uh, chat. She wanted me to tell you hi, by the way. So uh, Granny E from the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, I think she's in Seattle, says hi. Okay. And she used to call into the show when I was taking phone calls, uh, experimenting with that, and she would call in. And she and Mallory was very helpful to her as well. So yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, right. Um, the poets. This is amazing, unbelievable. Robert, one of the great supporters of the channel. Yeah, you remember her, right? Very sweet, very sweet. How's her computer working? So I think her computer is working okay. I think she had a, a special software she was running for her doctor's office or that they would keep track of her statistics and vitals or something. If I got that correct, she says, I think it's working okay. I think it's working. Uh, if Granny E, if you're, if you're watching, let us know. Uh, Mallory and I want to know. All right. So we got a Saturday night live stream here, 528. I'm not drinking. So Ma Mallory, last week I, we were drink I was drinking, but responsibly last week it was pretty fun actually. Yeah, she was a lot of fun. She was a lot of fun. I was going to do a cognac, but I'm not doing that tonight. Got to drive. I got to go somewhere tonight. All right. So according to Paul Batista, he's not a Mac user, but for the industry, this buzz is great. Intel and AMD will have to run to match the competition. Yeah, I think all competition spurs innovation, right? So I think that's good for the industry in general. Um, but uh, if you're, a, like I said, on my channel, I love the Mac stuff, but it just doesn't fit, doesn't doesn't get the views. And of course, they're not sending me the stuff uh, to review day one or even before. So it's really not worth it for me. I'm very perfectly fine with this 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch with the Core i9. Yeah, it got jet airplane fans on this. It's loud, it gets hot, but it does the job, right? And there, that's, in the end of the day, that's all I care about. So, and by the way, I'm expecting good stuff from Dell. I can't say too much, but Dell's coming out with some good stuff. HP is coming out with some good stuff. And we know with Lenovo, I already talked about that. Uh, all that stuff is coming. So it's actually been pretty good. Apple used to send no one nothing, right? But now they send it, they used to never send it to people on YouTube. They would only send it to publications and the quote unquote mainstream media. Uh, now they are sending it to the MKBHGs, the I Justines, uh, the Peter McKinnons of the world. And that's fine. Let them do it. And uh, that's good. That's fine. But uh, I'm not going to review it. I'm not going to spend five, six thousand dollars $6,000 for a few thousand views. Uh, it's just not worth it. I don't I have no reason to upgrade at this point. This works perfectly fine for my, my channel. And, it's, and it does what I need it to do. And that's it. All right, so we're at an hour, people. I don't know how much longer we're going to go. Maybe a few more minutes. But um, so far, it was a lot of fun tonight. We got a chance to look at this baby, the HP Chrome Base. And by the way, I'm going to put Linux on this, and I'll show you some uh, Android apps that it can run. And the Core i3 has been working well. So MKB is getting used by companies, I feel like, and the guy is like making very, very big money. So I, I don't fault him for being commercialized or whatever. You know, he's going to make the big money. He's getting huge amount of views. People flock to his channel. And if he's making the money, obviously it's successful. I, God bless him. Uh, he used to be pretty objective. You know, it's, it is what it is, you know. 
What version of Linux, Fedora, Ubuntu? I have no idea. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to try maybe either, either one of them, uh, see how it works on this. I just got this in, but we will be running uh, some version of Linux. I haven't decided yet on it. If anybody has any suggestions, maybe that is a good suggestion from the poets. So we will see. I agree. He turned into a shill. I'm not saying he did. I'm not saying he didn't. I don't know. Uh, that's between him and the companies. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Look, he's very successful. And he, he worked very hard at a young age. And he's reaping the rewards. How was the movie you were going to see the last one? So I went to go see the Batman. It was all right. I don't know if people saw it. I don't want to spoil it. It was good. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's the best Batman movie. But it was a decent movie. Yeah, Andy, I know you've been missing it, but I'm glad you're able to join us today. Although we're at the tail end, to be honest. But I'll, I'll leave it up if you want to take a look at it. When you can make a couple hundred of thousands per month, yeah. It might be even more than that, my friend. That's how much he's making, I'm sure. But um, it's it's a he's got unbelievable uh, um, cameras and and. I mean, when you have like fifty, hundred thousand dollar cameras, multiple, you can make all sorts of content. But it's got to be good. What is a Chrome base? Well, I think a Chrome base is what we see here, of course. And it's a—I uh, don't think it's an official name from Google. I think it was made up by HP, to be honest. But uh, it's a nice name. I think it pretty surmises what it is. It's a base and a Chromebook or Chrome OS running Chrome OS, and it rotates ninety degrees. Has some really nice speakers. A decent performance out of it out of running chrome us you don't need to have the latest and the greatest processor but it's a nice appliance actually i think it looks pretty good like two hundred thousand per month i think yeah it's it's a lot of money so the poet's glad he saw the batman may not watch it again but i'm glad i saw it yeah i'm glad i saw it too uh i didn't have too many expectations going in i know there's a lot of hype but uh it was good yeah, that's what I said earlier, Mallory, that it would look beautiful in the kitchen, uh, like a recipe, right? Um, now, I know you're an artist, so I don't know if it has pen support. I don't think it does. So that's a little bit of a miss, I think, right? Because I know you like to be able to um, do artwork on it. But, you know, we'll see if maybe it does. I don't think it does. Uh, does it have an inbuilt camera? It does. Uh, look at the live stream earlier. I was able to show you an example. I also have an example in the upcoming video. If nothing else, it makes for a good paperweight. <laughs> it looks nice, right? If it's useless, at least it's a good paperweight. It's, I think a little bit more than a paperweight, William. Uh, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with it. It's a really nice appliance is really what it is. Um, I really like the big MS Studio. You mean the Surface Studio? Yeah. that. See, I think Microsoft missed on that one. See, they had a great idea. The Surface Studio was a gorgeous piece of hardware with a beautiful display. But this, the, the internals really suffered. It was outdated internals by the time they released it. It was already a couple of generations behind. Surface Studio 2 was a little bit better, but again, suffers from the same problem. It was a generation or two behind. If they would have released that as a standalone display, that would have been a killer. And then you could have put something like a NUC or like a... Like a a tower PC, you know, under your desk or whatever, that would have been great. Having the functionality of the Surface Studio, but with the guts inside to be able to do real uh, creative work, to be able to do real creative work. So I'm going to have to ban the uh, spam that we just got. So they're banned. Please don't spam the chat, people. Yeah, and I remember the A940 from Lenovo, right? You had that... Uh, uh, Mallory and I remember that and I loved it when I reviewed it it's been great I don't have it anymore I had to give it back but yeah very good very good with the high base uh, this unit looks like it could be oh, tip over it doesn't tip over they made a big point of that uh, like it could tip over but the weight on it uh, it's actually been weighted pretty good so you don't really it's not going anywhere people you'd have to really hit it to tip it over uh, so I'm not really worried about it I think they did a good engineering job uh, weighing it, weighing it down, and so forth. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, I remember that, uh, Mallory. You told me that. Yeah. So I'm glad you were able to find the channel through that video. Um, so I'm hopeful, hopefully, that Microsoft will make a Surface Studio three. I think they're in, they're in a need for it. 
They, but this time, I hope they do it just to display. That would be great. And then let you bring your own hardware in terms of the processor and the GPU. And I think that would be really good. Yeah, I think it's pretty scratch resistant. I think this might even be Gorilla Glass, but I don't have any specifics on that. Uh, it doesn't look like it'll scratch. It's a very glossy display, as you see here. Um, very, very glossy, but a very nice IPS display. You know, you'll collect some fingerprints and stuff, but a uh, pretty nice display nonetheless. All right, I think we're over an hour, people. So I think we've hit the, uh, the, the time we're going to say goodbye. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I want to thank the moderators for doing such a great job. You know, actually, I just thought of something. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could, before we go, wouldn't it be great if we could run Windows on this? I'm going to put Linux on it, but I think putting uh, Windows on it would be interesting, right? That would be pretty cool. But anyway, that's just a digression. Uh, I want to thank the moderators for doing such a good job. I have a lot of stuff coming. Remember, make sure you subscribe to the channel. All the Alder Lake stuff. I got some Ryzen stuff coming in, 6000 series. It's all on the way. Uh, just bear with me as we get it in. Um, got a lot to do on that. So a lot of stuff. I think we're out of the, do the doldrums, the uh, holding pattern. We're going to get into a lot of good reviews. So until next time, people, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody, and have a great week upcoming. Bye-bye.